AMD just announced Zen 3. What was good and what was bad? Let's get into it. Zen 3 was announced and here is what is good. The IPC improvement is impressive. They improved the effective memory latency with a CCX design change from 4 cores to 8 cores. That means the 32 gigabytes of L3 cache is now directly accessible by each core. They also made many other microarchitectural changes that we will learn more details at launch. To measure the IPC, they ran an 8 core 3800 XT versus the 8 core 5800X, both running at a fixed 4 gigahertz. They then ran 25 workloads, none that were identified, and they calculated the geometric mean. The improvement they showed was a 19% uplift for Zen 3, which is higher than the 15% uplift from Zen 1 to Zen 2. Zen 3 also has higher boost clock speeds, now up to 4.8 GHz on the 5900X and 4.9 GHz on the 5950X. Not quite 5 GHz, but I don't think it really matters much, except maybe marketing purposes. They showed the 5900X running a single-threaded Cinebench R20 run, and it scored an amazing 631 points. That's 16% higher than Intel's i9-10900K, and the only CPU to break the 600 barrier in single-threaded performance. When compared to Zen 2, that is a 20% increase over the 3900XT and a 25% increase over the 3900X. That's a big wow. But why didn't they show the multi-core score? Could it be that it is not as impressive? In a recently leaked CPU-Z benchmark, an alleged 5900X was 24.9% or, with rounding, 25% faster in single-threaded performance than the 3900X, and it was 15.8% faster in multi-core performance. Being on the same process node, I expect the all-core clocks to be similar to the XT versions, and we know that the XT versions did not excel in multi-threaded performance compared to the X versions. So that 15% multi-core may be a good indicator, but we'll have to wait for the benchmarks. For productivity applications, Zen 3 just widens the gap over Intel. Zen 2 overtook Intel as the best productivity CPU, and Zen 3 just extends the lead. From a gaming perspective, AMD provided a chart comparing games at 1080p high detail using a 2080 Ti, and it showed that Zen 3 is, on average, a 25.7% improvement over Zen 2 in the games that were compared. AMD also provided a chart to compare the 12-core 5900X against the fastest gaming CPU today, the 10-core i9-10900K. The chart shows a comparison in the same 10 games at 1080p high settings with the 2080Ti. The 5900X is the clear winner in two games. It's 5-6% better in five games and was about at parity with three others. The 5900X was on average 6.8% faster than Intel's i9. If this holds true for all games, then AMD's 5900X will become the fastest gaming CPU in the world. Now they didn't show it, but with the 16-core 5950X having a 100 MHz boost clock advantage and four additional cores over the 5900X, I think it will technically be the best gaming CPU in the world. AMD did provide comparison results in four games against Intel's i9. We can compare that to the results of the 5900X against the i9, so I put the results of the 12-core 5900X on top with the 16-core 5950X on the bottom. Again, these are 1080p high settings with a 2080 Ti. In Ashes of the Singularity, the 5950X is 11% better than the i9, where the 5900X is 5% better. In Far Cry New Dawn, the 5950X is a tie with the i9, while the 5900X is 2% better. This could be variability and a bit of rounding, so these are very much the same. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 5950X is 5% better versus 6% better in the 5900X. Again, very much the same. Finally, the 5950X is 5% better in Total War Three Kingdoms, where the 5900X is only 1% better. So the 5950X will likely be at par or with a small single-digit performance improvement over the 5900X. Technically, the 16-core 5950X will be the CPU king, however, by a very small margin and for a hefty $250 price. To find out for sure, we'll have to wait for the benchmarks when they are released on November 5th. What was not so good? Here is what I didn't like, and if you're an AMD fanboy, I would recommend keeping an open mind as I go through these. Base clocks were lower by 100 MHz from the Zen 2 counterparts. 
It's the same process node, and they claim that the Zen 3 architecture is more efficient than Zen 2. So if it's more efficient, shouldn't the base clock have gone up 100 MHz, or at least stayed the same as Zen 2? I don't understand why, and no explanation was given. No more Prism Cooler. No cooler is offered on the Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 processors. AMD is recommending AIOs. This trend started with the XT branding in Zen 2 and has continued into Zen 3. The interesting point is the Ryzen 5 5600X has a Wraith Stealth cooler. Why not offer the Wraith Prism for a $300 part? Up until recently, you could get the Wraith Prism cooler on the 8-core 3700X for $300 or less. That little race stealth is going to be noisy and offer no overclocking headroom without a CPU cooler upgrade. For the increase in price, why not offer a premium experience to new purchasers or to those upgrading from previous Ryzen 5 CPUs? For the extra money you charge, the end user would get a much better and quieter experience with a touch of RGB. No replacements for the 3600 or 3700 CPUs. These have been widely available for $180 for the 3600 and $280 for the 3700X, and now we don't have a replacement. People have been saying, just wait, and once the 5000 series are launched, then the 3700X will come down in price, just like the 2700X came down in price. I have news for you. The 5800X at $449 will not push down the price of the 3700X. The 5600X at $299 will not push down the price of the 3600. AMD has offered no timing for either replacements. It may be well into next year before we see these replacements. It does make me wonder, is AMD's strategy just to keep the Zen 2 base 3600 and 3700X CPUs around for entry level or budget builds? Will they continue at the same prices until Intel's Rocket Lake launches at the end of the first quarter next year? Time will tell. Zen 3 is a $50 price increase across the board over the XT versions and its previous consumer flagship. AMD did not replace Zen 2 with Zen 3 for the same money to give you that great generational performance upgrade that we all love. No, they looked at what Intel was getting away with and they spent time developing charts to justify it from a performance per dollar metric. They compared it to Intel's enthusiast CPUs or the K SKUs. However, they didn't compare it to the price of the KF SKUs the ones without the integrated GPU, which are less expensive, and a better comparison to the AMD 5000 CPUs that also don't have an integrated GPU. For the performance per dollar comparison in productivity applications, AMD won that race with Zen 2, so let's focus on gaming and the performance per dollar for gamers. Let's start with the 5600X compared to Intel's i5-10600K, where they show with both CPUs priced at $299, the 5600X is better by 13%. However, if you change the price of Intel's CPU to something lower, then this advantage shrinks to something less than 4%. I would argue that anything less than 5% or smaller is not significant and should not be the determining factor in purchasing the CPU for your next computer build. One sale price change on either side and the results of this metric quickly swings one way or the other. Looking at the 5800X, it is priced up to where it was a tie with the i7-10700K at $409. Finally, the 5900X is priced up to $549 to show it is 3% better, and again, not a significant value improvement over the i9-10900K. Then again, I don't know where you find that i9-10900K at that price, and quite frankly, the comparison to the i9-10850K may make more sense where you lose 100 megahertz, however, it is priced below $500. From the charts, it is clear that AMD adjusted the price of Zen 3 upward for parity with Intel's performance per dollar in gaming. I don't like it because it seems like the start of a trend for AMD. Keep in mind, the price increase is not due to some outside factors where their cost increased. The manufacturing node has not changed for Zen 3. It's the same process for Zen 3 as it is for Zen 2, so it is not more expensive to manufacture. The charts show they deliberately looked at what Intel was charging for their KSQ CPUs and thought, hey, if Intel has been milking gamers and enthusiasts for all these years for higher margins, then why can't we? Still don't believe that AMD is pricing to Intel's levels? Let me demonstrate with some examples. Take the pricing of the 5800X, the 8-core CPU for $449. 
in late 2020, an 8-core should not cost more than $400. Intel was able to get away with it since the i9-9900K was the fastest gaming CPU in the world at the time it launched in 2018. However, Intel's 8-core CPU has been replaced by the 10-core i9-10900K. Today, the 8-core is a CPU that should be in the $300 range or less. Think about this. If the 5600 with 6 cores is $300, then that's $300 divided by 6 or $50 a core. To get two additional cores to move up to the 8-core 5800X, you will pay an additional $150 for those two cores or $75 a core. That's a 50% price premium. That is a horrible value. The 5900X at $549 looks like a steal in comparison to the 5800X since you get four additional cores for just $100 or you get them for just $25 a core. A real bargain. Finally, to get the ultimate CPU, the 5950X at $799, it will cost you an additional $250 for four more cores or $6250 a core. But this one offers greater productivity improvements than gaming improvements as we saw earlier. So if you need it for more productivity, then this might be the CPU for you. Another way to look at this is the cost per core. The 5600X is $50 a core. The 5800X is $56.25 per core. And the 5900X is just under $46 a core. The 5950X is $50 a core, but again, that's not really needed for gaming in this generation. You tell me which one is the bargain. In the end, for gaming only, you have to ask yourself this question. Is the performance per dollar for Zen 3 better than Intel? Or did AMD just shift the pricing to be on par with Intel? AMD is no longer content with just taking market share away from Intel and making the same margins as before with the previous pricing structure. No, they want to take the same nonsensical pricing structure Intel has established and adopt it to continue to milk gamers and enthusiasts just like Intel has been doing for years. AMD has quietly pulled an Intel. I know it's a harsh thing to say, but just look at the numbers. If Intel doesn't respond with price cuts in its 10th generation or offer something competitive in Rocket Lake, buckle up since this is just the start of the milking process now coming from AMD. Don't get me wrong, a $50 price increase is not the end of the world, the 5000 series of CPUs from AMD are going to be great performers and I am looking forward to the benchmarks. I just wish they would have kept their previous pricing and also offered the full lineup at launch. And what about that big knobby tease? Well, I'll have more to say about that in a future video. Like it if you learned something, share it, that really helps the channel. Subscribe for more. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next one.